excited to see Zion Spartan versus Dyrus. If they decide to switch those up, Dyrus has been faring super good in the 2v1s. Zion Spartan now back in the natural habitat of the top lane. I don't mm. think he's going to be getting Nidalee. Uh, that'll be the ban out there. But what's be interesting to see what Nintendo Dax brings, as well as just Good Game University, because they're the ones to do the Fizz. They're the ones to do... Well, I was going to say the Lulu, but they're not. That was mandatory. Fun. <laughs> so it, Fizz. Yeah. It's still got to feel so good for right. Zion Spartan to be back in the top yeah. lane. Like he said, it's like switching from quarterback to wide receiver. Like As a top laner, he can just do what he wants. He gets to run the long, the deep routes, and just kind of play the game, make big plays. I was watching a lot of Voiboy's stream, and I know we don't want to go back to Curse, but like every game he was playing against Zion Spartan. At like five games in a row, he was just landing against Voiboy. So Zion is practicing against these guys, and he definitely holds his own. He's a really quality player. We'll have to see what he gets in Champion Select to hold his own this time. As we do enter in, Singed is banned out, as he's been seeing a lot of play here the past few weeks. Kale and Malphite as well. And the Akali ban is what Zion Spartan played against CLG earlier today. So what TSM has adopted right now is just Let's ban out what GGU most immediately used just to make <laughs> them play something different and put them a little yep. bit out of their comfort zone. For sure. Let's see what this last ban is. The Tarek does go out, so we're not going to see any armor. Yeah. Come, no armor. I actually wish game. that GGU would have banned Tarek and then Singed and then Malphite because they would have banned out TSM Aww. and the game would be over. It would but completely be over. They banned out SMT. I SM. don't even know what that means. <laughs> Well, they banned out a cat on the other side, so yeah. we'll be okay. We do have a word on one side. Still <laughs> waiting for the pick. The guys are taking a good amount of time. We can see him talking back and forth, though. Zion discussing with his team. What are they going to choose? It has to be quite an ambiguous pick, or do they choose? Yeah, it's just going to be the Shinsau. jungle. Easy enough. Yeah. So the Tarek has kind of been the lock-in first pick if it's available. And in the last game was the battle of Jarvan jungle versus Shin Zhao jungle with Lauda Mortis and St. Yep. Vicious. And like GG we'll is like... I'm going to go with Shinsau here, and Nintendo's probably going to be playing that one. Unless the Abram plays Vi, that would be pretty interesting. Or Hecarim would be another one I want to see him Hecarim, play. Hecarim, he does like to ha play Hecarim. He likes yeah. the horse. If anyone hasn't seen it, there was an also kind of like wom awesome Wombo combo video oh. on <laughs> Reddit, which TSM could totally go for if they wanted to, because Reginald plays a bunch of Orianna, and the Abram plays Hecarim. It was pretty much a max range Orianna ult on four people, which collapsed them into the play same point. Play of the point, day. Play of the day. odd one just Hecarim <laughs> ulted right in the middle. They actually just send them back out, but they're all dead. So <laughs> Yeah, by that time, he had already put the burn on them. They were yeah. good. So we see MF coming in here, and you actually might get the Hecarim with the long-range Leona initiation. I could absolutely see it. They already have picked their Tark substitute for tower diving. Yeah. Leona can buff up her armor enough that if TSM wants to do their early, one two, early 2v1 tower dive, they absolutely can. Yeah, for sure versus AP Trendemir, Rumble will not be able to deal with that no. split push unless they shut him down in the lane or win team fights earlier. If there's going to be a team to hard initiate onto a split pushing AP Trendemir, it's going to be TSM. They are the team that is fearless. So for TSM, they're probably going to do the early game tower dives and then they have to force team fights and stop AP Trendemir from becoming a problem. For GGU, they have to survive to that moment, right? They have the same yeah. split push composition that Curse played with AP Trindamir earlier, they get the shove from Lux, and then they have the pushing support as well. So this will be a very interesting game, Riv. No, we actually haven't seen too much of quirky Lulu matchup in the lane. How's it going to yeah. go up against MF and Leona? I think it's just a shove lane, but I also think they're not going to fight each other. I think we're going to see the 2v1 lanes straight off the bat, and it, it will just be a shove fest. If it is a lane matchup, I think it's a little weak because they can get engaged on, but probably not. All right, we'll have to see as these two teams come in. Game six of Super Wednesday. We're not even oh, yeah. close to being done yet. We're almost halfway. Almost halfway. One Once we get to the halfway pumps. of this game, <laughs> we'll be halfway there. Yeah. Yeah, we will. That is technically true. <laughs> and we see the two teams. <laughs> they're going to be heading off for this match. We do have Good Game University versus Team Solo Mid. Second matchup of the... So second matchup for these teams, not together, but of the day. So they're all warmed up. They've been seeing other strats going around. If you're just joining us, we've been seeing multiple four-minute turrets on both the top and the bottom side for these teams. As we jump into Summoner's Rift, we'll have to see if history repeats itself here for Game 6. Bring to the third and Jap bringing you this one live once again here from L.A. And we're into the game. So the Red Elixir start on AP Trindamir. I feel like this will be... The story of this game is yep. we get the pause right at the start. Shouldn't be too big of a deal, but I really want to see as this develops, like, how, how this works out. And uh, actually, one thing I do want to mention that a lot of people don't know about these pauses is there is, we have a rule that during pauses, 
teams are actually not allowed to talk about the game or strategy. So that's why you see these guys sitting here during pauses just kind of just quieted down. So no team would ever be able to pause just to, to strategize. That's not allowed at all. We actually see the peripheral little extensions they use there. He has a, a mouse handle for his cord and whatnot. All these little things that these guys bring, you can see it right there on the end. It just holds the cord in the air, and it's actually, I suggest people look into getting those because they're absolutely amazing. And it really helps you keep track of your mouse. Oh, and then your, your cord's never going to get ever. mixed up with your mouse. Simply ever. Is Nintendo X the only one on the desk using that? Yep. He's a smart guy. He has a problem with his computer. Look at what... No, <laughs> I, I'm not sure what his problem is. We should be able to get it sorted fairly shortly. It's an FPS sure. problem apparently on his machine. Just get a quick relog in for him. Yeah. And for these two teams going against each other, this, it, this is obviously kind of like, you know, a little bit of momentum stopper. But they're just going to take a deep breath and get back into it. If any mm -hmm. jungle invade was going to happen, it's still going to happen. Now they have a little bit of time to take a breath from what that was and just do it a little bit more calm now. Yeah, just the stops and starts shouldn't affect these guys too much. Surprisingly, aside from Jinte, really, a lot of these guys have multitudes of land experience. TSM, along with COG, the two longest standing teams in North America. TSM, the longest standing roster in North America. They've been yeah. the same team for almost a full year March now, I 13th. Believe. Yeah, March 13th. They will be a full team for an entire year. And then you look at that across to GDU, and hopefully they don't get thrown off by too much because Jinte's second game all time, he's like, oh, man, a pause. I got to, what do I do? <laughs> they I can't, can't talk about they anything. No, they can't talk about the game, but they love yeah. talking back and forth to each other. Zion Spartan says, don't hurt me, Dyrus. Be gentle. And they're all, <laughs> Dyrus <laughs> is just hasn't really said too much. He's like, yep, I have the perfect room page for you. So we'll see what these guys have in store for each other. We see Nintendo decks heading out to the mid lane, so it looks like once they get started, it's going to be the pretty much human wards off the bat. GGU has yeah. been placing a, a one Wraith ward down, and then a semi late blue ward that they don't invade on, but they just want supervision on it for you know the come around ganking you know, three four minutes. It's one of these weird things. I, I want to think for these teams, like if they were going to play the long the long con in level one fights, it would be like I'd almost want to create a level one strategy that you kind of do the same time over and mm -hmm. over again. And especially if you're one of the like better teams in the league, like Curse or TSM or something. Th this is getting a little off topic, but I had this idea the other day, and I thought it, it was brilliant. Hit it. Hit uh, everyone with it. You leave the same hole in your level one like every game. Like you're just like, that one blue ward invade like coming into my blue buff is always open, right? And you just like, even if teams exploit it, you're like, man, they just keep screwing up our blue buff and stuff. But then when you get to the games that really matter, like the season championships or the up-down matches you or something. You crush somebody on the blue You just made. wait for them to come for it because you know they've had the most prep coming into those games, and that's when they'd find the holes for your level ones. You pounce. But I don't think that's happening. So you want to lose to idea. win. Yeah. You, you, you play, it's like rope-a-dope. You just like, you let them hit you a few times. That's just like so Freak's way of winning lane. You give the guy like five kills, you get the bounty, and then you, you crush him. Kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like that. So we're waiting <laughs> on a keyboard right now for Don't Mash Me. He did just that. The pause made him. No, I'm just kidding. Blinging out with that ring still. Gotta love it. I really loved his. Uh, he's not wearing his sunglasses, but I loved his sunglasses in the very first feature of like what is Super Week where he just. Boom. Deal with it. Down. It's like a reverse deal with it. Because usually you put him on. Just deal with it. And then it's off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you do actually. Yeah. You, yes. Okay. I got my memes. Good work. Gotta learn them counting turrets. So we're looking to get these guys back in. We can hear them somewhat chatting it up, having fun with the admin, saying, yeah, we're ready. A few people are ready. Mm -hmm. We're waiting on this. But coming in mid lane, Oriana Lux, kind of just a battle of pushing the lane. It's the shove fest, right? I mean, I think Reginald will be able to out-aggress a little bit because if Jinte ever uses his light binding, Reginald has superior auto attack trade with Oriana yeah. over Lux, so he would look to just go straight in on that. And Reginald wants to be the aggressive laner, plus there's going to be the added level of urgency for TSM this game because they know about AP Trindamir and they <laughs> need to keep him under, under wraps. Like, it's... It's not like AP Trindamir explodes and becomes this unstoppable beast, but his split push pressure is there so much that the urgency, and urgency of the initiations is enhanced. And there we go. We can see the thumbs up from the admins. And don't mash me. We are underway with our sixth game of the day. And we are about to be on the rift. Oh yeah. We do have this matchup going in. Zion Spartan on that Trindamir. Nintendo Dex on Zin. Jinte on Lux. Mash me on Corky. And Bloodwater is representing Lulu this game. On the other side, we have Dyrus. 
Rep and Rumble up top. Doesn't look like we'll get a lane swap in here. Odd one on Jarvan in the jungle, feeling very comfortable on that pick. Reginald on his Orianna. Chaos favored it on the MF. And Expecial bringing out Leona for this game. And the Jarvan jungle for the Odd one is definitely something he's kind of always played for a while, but he's never really mained. So I don't know if he's 100% comfortable on this. It's not, unless he really plays it like full, full tank, a supporty style jungle for him. It's more of a heavy ganker who wants to run away and get a lot of farm. So we'll see if TSM defers a bit more farm to the odd one, or if he just gets it through ganks. Not too many wards as well. Again, just those one near Wraith ward we were, gonna, we were pointing out before. And the top ward do initiate that late blue buff invade. The lane swap does initially, or uh, eventually come out, I should say. It looks like they're gonna put that against Zion Spartan. So this will be the first time we see the Tridomir in a 2v1. And round seven of the tower dives early on in the game. And we actually haven't seen any tower dives this game because all the 2v1 lanes have resulted in those solo laner yeah. just giving it away. It's it's almost kind of like we've went through a bit of an evolution, right? Like teams realized it was coming, so they started sending the jungler down there. But then the junglers would get killed, so they stopped sending the jungler down there and just gave up the turrets. Looks like they're moving down. They will get some good help here, probably for the smite list for the odd one. We'll have to see if he goes for anything aggressive on the red buff. If they know Zin is at his blue, they do get the ward down, so they are they the ping down on the ward, I should say, just above that mid, so they know that it's there. Nintendo Dex is going to grab this up. He's not going to need a smite on that one, so both junglers get around smite list. We'll have to see if that's used. It's just going to be about speeding them up to get to that 356 landmark for a turret kill, really, because they got... This means that both of them can skip the wraiths to get straight onto the red buff and get it a little bit sooner. Also, there is an approach ward for GGU up top if Odwin wants to go in, but there is not one for Dyrus, as far as I can tell. So no, regular smite. Yep. They'd be able to smite. Smiting out on the red, so we're not going to see anything crazy coming from the junglers here. As we get, you see the one just kind of watching out and looking at his team. So the red buff's about to be grabbed. We do yep. have the swap lane, but like we said, we haven't seen that 2v1 gank coming in. Everybody's been warding behind themselves, or the turret has just been destroyed mm -hmm. way too early for it to happen. I think we're going to see one of those again, as we have a slight other technical issue. And then, then we're just going to have to go through the rest of the game, right? But TSM is their, this is their second game of Super Week. Right, because they had the Xerath and Malphite one. This is also right. GGU's second game as well. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Indeed, we can see them getting this all set up. Looks like they're actually almost ready to get back in this one. They say they are ready. So just a quick fix there. Back into the adjusted features. And they are ready to go. Still nothing has happened in this matchup. A few pauses has delayed us a little bit, but we're back live. Look at the buys here. It's going to be the fairy charm. Looks like somebody's always gone for a fairy charm and then the other in the flask in mid, depending on who it's been. And there is a switch up, finally. Nintendo Dex took his red buff and is not going for the lane. So they may try to defend with AP Trendemir. AP Trendemir does have ah. the red elixir, so he is increasingly harder to dive, but there will be so much armor coming through from TSM if they decide to go for this. They did just get that level two in. Looks like he grabbed up Spinning Slash as well to make this an easier engage or disengage for himself. The odd one comes around on those wards we just called being placed. Looks like they are going to dance this one out. TSM did this on their They're third go. week, and they are going to go on it. This is that dive they've been so sure about. The initiations go out. They let the damage just sink in right now onto Nintendo. They get first blood. They find one for themselves. Can they continue to turn this around? Zion Spartan, does he have it up? They get a great scene of the blade over the wall. A double kill for Chaos for the one of odd one. And double buffs as well. Yeah. So that was almost as good as you're gonna get for GG on the defense department. They made TSM eat as many turret shots as possible, but they went for the double buffs first to make sure Chaos had them. And then they ran town, or they, they went for the double buffs first just to make sure they would get them. And then Zion Spartan, instead of sitting in the turret and just eating the one kill, decided to keep chasing. So a win for TSM. They are going to get turret damage, but mainly they got the double kill for Chaos. It's going to be great as this one goes down. It's a little bit after four minutes, so they're slacking, but they are going to be able to grab the chat. <laughs> yeah, so 426. Oh, they leave it. Was right. when they wanted to get the turret, but I mean, uh, even if they don't take the turret. They have a great advantage. They might want to continue to dodge yeah. because the Ignite and the Ghost is down on Zion Spartan. And Nintendo Dex knows he has to be up here for the defense. He's walking through a ward and 
at the very least is going to stop them from tower diving, I think, but it's still pressure from TSN. That is a level 2 W coming from Reginald right now. He is just wreaking havoc with that damage. Looks like he's going to try. Actually, he leveled up his Q first, so that was a level 1 dissonance. Very scary coming in for Jintae in mid. We see more pressure up top. Nintendo Dax forced to come back into the top lane chat just to guard. Yeah, and their TSM is pinging down hard on this one. The odd one wants to come around. The TSM knows they've already lost their own turret, so they want to get the GGU turret as fast as possible. And Nintendo Dex cannot defend this. There is no way he's he's gonna. They're stick actually around. looking for the kill more than they want the turret right now. If they could get that second advantage on him backing or running away, they were about to take it. But they find the turret and they're happy with that. Eight point three thousand gold. It's a thousand gold ahead of GGU right now. So much of that is just on the double kill and the fact that they denied Zion Spartan so much of that farm. They've kept that AP Trinimir to five minion kills right now. So the early plan of just dealing with the AP Trend is, is there so far. Yeah, crush it down and don't let him do anything. Don't let him breathe at all. The stranglehold tactic seems to be working so far for TSM, but we'll see if Zion Spartan can bring it back into play for his team. Crushing down on this bottom lane as well. Mash me, shredding through the minions as Dyrus tries to put, ooh. Uh, could have been a small initiation there if they were able to get that speed onto Dyrus, but they did not choose to go for it. And Jinte's looking pretty uh, dry here in mid on mana, so he's got to be careful. And this lane has been pretty trade heavy so far, right? Like the minion kills are a little low, which tells me that Reginald and Jinte have been sparring a lot in mid lane. They've been foregoing CS to land a little bit of harass on each other, but it's pretty much dead even. Yeah, you'll see. It who are farming, if you look at the CS's, where pretty much everybody should be at the 50 and 55, so aggression in almost every lane coming in. And those 2v1 lanes are definitely taking a toll. 14 for Zion Spartan is the 31 of Dyrus. But the odd one, because he spent so much time in lanes, he's soaked up a lot of experience, and now is just bullying Nintendo in the turret, trying to get that turret damage. And this is what the victorious teams oh. have done so far today. It's the extended pressure. They're living at the enemy turrets, and daring the other team to fight them. Wow, Reginald is really going for utility here, just maxing out that ball movement on the Q for anything else instead of that W damage. It's one of the choices on Orianna. Like, I've seen it done both ways. They'll mm -hmm. either get the the Q or the W. Right. It's just a different play style. This is a little more high pressure for Reginald. He'll get to reposition and keep Jinte on his toes a little bit more, mm -hmm. but his actual like QW burst harass is much, much lower. Like he's going to go get himself a blue buff right now, but over and over again, if you can continue to, continue to do that, doesn't matter how much damage you're doing, he's still going to get it put out, and that's what he's going to get with that blue buff. So that should be up around 13, 14 minutes for him next time. See, there's no control being put on GG. Use buff. A good amount of burst damage there. It's not really going to push him out of lane. Jinte trying to keep the wave pushed back, but Reginald with the blue buff can do the same as self. And Zion Spartan finally going to be able to get about 10 minion kills, right? But because they've done the lane swap, as soon as TSM sees Zion Spartan has went bottom, they jump on the dragon. They also don't have to worry about Jinte's ulti as he has just used it. He heads over towards blue. So this one's pretty free for them with no contest. Eight minutes in, that dragon goes down. 14 minutes for a dragon there. Looks like Reginald could get enough damage on this turret to make an impact here in the next few minutes if he wants to prep it. So oh now... Dear. Zahn Spartan in danger of getting Dove again, but he's level 6 this time, so if TSM wants to do something, it's press the turret down, because killing uh, Trindamir at level 6 is much more difficult than it was before. Well, it's going to be a lane for a lane here if it happens. That top is getting pretty aggressed on. Zion Spartan's doing what he can to hold this one. It looks like he's actually holding the 3 off in that top lane. There's the ultimate in middle, actually. Nice job just pulling in Jintae and Nintendo to gets out safely. I don't even think Reginald took damage for that. Like, there were two people mid. And he basically just 2v1 them away from himself. That's really dominating play by his Orianna in mid lane. It might be why it was banned in the first game of the day. <laughs> <laughs> looks like this turret may finally go down. Mashmi has one more minion left there, but it looks like they are going to keep this up and keep the harass on Dyrus. Seems like it's a, a bit of a change from what we've had in the past games. Now that the advantage is there, they're keeping the lanes up. And once all the turrets kind of fall for both these teams as they're trading them back and forth, is when the team fights are artificially forced if for the next thing that's going to happen, which actually gives TSM a fairly large advantage since they have a 2,000 gold lead, or will if they're able to finish off this bottom turret by GGU, and that, that's good for TSM. So as we look around, the BF Swords actually quite quickly grabbed up here by both of the 80 carries, but with that extra gold that Kaox has been able to accrue through the double kill, he puts it right into the scepter right off the bat. 
So that's the difference we've kind of seen because Cop was just playing in Cop, a very similar strategy the, sword, the other day. Yeah. And he was going for straight AD, but this time you get the Vamp Scepter. Dyrus taking that damage from the top lane, but he's still trying to hold it off here. Overheating himself to stay safe. They get the mocking shout down. They go on a special. They have like a double initiation going down here. Both of these guys can't help each other. They somewhat turn it around. A special doesn't drop to the ignite, so he draws the attention of Spartan. Can they turn this around? He's getting a bit of fury here. The ultimate still there to be used. There's no mana coming in for Chaos, and the last hit goes down. Will the ignite be enough? He's trying to get more back from the Q, and he does live. So the aggression from GGU kicking back a little bit, right? They were daring them to fight the whole game. Finally, Nintendo Dex and Zion Spartan were able to turn it around a little bit. Chaos went all in trying to flash for that red buff, thought it would be enough, but he forgot about the threat of the double daggers and the boots on Trindamir giving him a double kill. Pushing mid lane, GGU looking to take an advantage here, and this is something they haven't been able to do, especially this early in a game, is when they win a fight like that, they've been forced to back and use whatever money they got. But now they're able to start pushing their advantages. This turret may go down here. It'll definitely be a big global map lead, at least in vision. Oh Looks man. like they're gonna be stopped just short of taking the turret down one after the other of crowd control. Jinte may find himself going down. He gets a great light binding, but there's just too much burn. The last hit from the odd one picks himself up a kill, and Dyrus finds an equalizer ultimate kill. The equalizer is a much longer range spell than most people realize. It's <laughs> It's like a pseudo global. You can put it from so far away. That's why he was able to come in at the end and pick off Gente. That was GGU trying to make a playoff of something that wasn't quite there. They they did this against CLG as well. They made a great play and immediately followed it up with a mistake off their overwhelming confidence. You see five to three as the middle turret gets pressured here. GGU had pressure on the mid turret. They weren't able to grab it, and that turns into them losing fight and that turret. You see it 15,000 gold, 16,000 gold. They're about two and a half K behind right now. And really shortly, Chaos is gonna be able to get that bottom turret as well because they were so close to getting that when GG made their first good play. Right. And that was gonna be the thing that they could kind of protect is they're saying, we're gonna live on this bottom turret, we're gonna take our two to one turret advantage and we're gonna keep the gold even. But because they pushed up mid trying to get the turret, they actually ended up sacrificing two turrets of their own, didn't even get their own turret and they hadn't back two kills. And now Nintendo is trying to hold this turret but I don't think he's in position to because here comes a three man dive. And Nintendo forced to use his ultimate to kind of break everything out there. They co keep going wow. in on this initiation. And it looks like they are going to start to focus on Zion Spartan. He draws them away from the fight. So they've kept Nintendo alive here. And they may have kept both themselves alive. That was a fantastic escape by <laughs> Nintendo X. Audacious is charging to the creeps so that he didn't put the intimidate passive on anybody. Knock Chaos back with the ultimate. And then juked completely X Special's Solar Flare. So. Awesome job by him to escape. They still lost the turret, and they're still behind in the game, but we just had to highlight that awesomeness. Awesomeness, indeed. Seeing Dyrus' build as he goes back. He picks up two wards for himself, so he doesn't have the gold yet to bring in the pink wards. He does build the haunting guys, and it looks like Nasher's actually coming in somewhat already for, yeah, Trindamir. Get that first core item for himself. Chaos taking some good damage from the Lux passive there. They choose to continue going in onto this one. It looks like he's going to go down quite quickly. Will they focus more? But no, GGU Jazz finding those little advantages they need. And here's the problem, though, with GGU. The Trindomir strat uses Trindomir to split push, right? But the other four need to be resilient to tower dives from TSM. The fact that Zion Spartan has all of the kills, therefore the majority of GGU's gold distribution, right. means the other four people that need to survive against a potential five-man rush by TSM down an inhibitor is just even weaker there, even less likely to be able to withstand that assault. May not be a problem if he was an AD Trindomir as much. Well, I don't think AD Trindomir is very good, <laughs> is the problem. <laughs> At least some more damage that they would be looking for. Yeah. We see the gold here stacking up 4,300 to 5,700 on the AD. Carries Mashmi quite behind there. The Zeal and the Bloodthirster finished over on the side of Chaos, and he actually puts in the sword as well, the long sword for the next buy. He comes into his last whisper. The Infinity Edge trying to be finished off on Corky here. So he's looking to get that burst damage, but he's spending a bit more. And the cooldown reduction is there for Zion Spartan now. Just like every AP Trendomir, he's got the cooldown boots and the Nashers too, so he's at 39% as TSM takes yet another drag. GGU is keeping their mentality in this game, knowing they need to keep wards in their inventories. They're doing that as a team, so they're not losing out there. They're remembering the small things. That's going to help you 
stave off the pressure that TSM is applying right now. A lot of wards from TSM, you can see two almost right in the same area right there, but really giving vision to multiple entries into that jungle and just a better advantage if a fight were ever to happen. See, they do have the locket of the Iron Solari on both sides. They're fight ready there. The Infinity Edge finished on Corky now to the Bloodthirster. Both of the supports have their pink wards. These guys are ready to go head to head in that next mistake. Yeah, and the Ruby Side Stone coming out on both supports is something we've actually seen every game in the last two weeks. Simply During every that game. infographic, it was 16 of 16 supports in both North America and Europe built the Ruby Side Stone. So if you're at home and you're a support and be like, yeah, I think I should build the Ruby Side Stone. Or if you were ever considering. Yeah. <laughs> like, I wonder if I should get that Ruby Side Stone. Yeah, I think you should at some point. Seems like a very just bare game for these mids. You look at their inventories and it's like they were kind of at Fountain for the first few minutes. You see an Athene in both and the regular Boots mm -hmm. one to both as well. They haven't been getting too much action. We have some assists for Reginald because he got himself into a few fights, but not too much overall. And amongst all that, Reginald is able to pull ahead a little bit, right? Because he's mm -hmm. got the 30 minion kills, so he has been applying pressure. That is somewhat due to the other pressure that's existed on the map and the fact that Nintendo decks haven't really been able to assist in that lane for Reginald, and he has been using the, the auto attack harass from Orianna to really, really create off of that. But now we're into the game, really. The turrets are dead, three on each side. The gold is still kind of close, so this is where the team fights start getting forced around. AP Trendemir is on the loose, and Dyrus has to deal with him. Bloodwater just took a few shots from Chaos, and he did not like the end result there. <laughs> Half of his health as he sits yeah. in a bush. He's like, you guys can sit in that one. I'm gonna sit back here for a <laughs> second. You can see cautious caution from both teams, the ball being used for vision, and GGU really holding their antsiness down. Zion Spartan in his top, so no teleports actually. I think it's the first game where we don't see teleports or any of the lanes. The Equalizer going out in the bottom lane, and the Undying Rage coming out here. Dyrus definitely has the upper hand on this fight, and it's gonna go to this top lane. If Dyrus can pick up that kill, it'll stave it off, but he will not be able to there. They are able to get one as they force down onto Nintendo. It's gonna be big for them in this one. He pushes them back. It's a good final spark, but it doesn't hit with the passive on. Bloodwater goes down two. Reginald picks up two for himself, and they are going to push that one off. Nice job by TSM on both sides of the map. Dyrus pressing back Zion Spartan. The fact that he almost killed him was a huge bonus because you generally just need to hold off AP Trindamir. And then the other four members of GGU, since Zion Spartan on AP Trindamir had all of the kills, was not even close to strong enough to being able to handle TSM in a 4v4. TSM realized that, jumped in for the initiation, came in with an easy 2 for 0. Checking special right now. He did not, but... Odd one did just pick up that Oracle, so they're looking to really control the map right now. Probably pressure out the Baron objective, not necessarily do it, but force GGU into a position they really don't want to be in. And they're going to be able to continue to force GGU into yeah. some bad positions. Turrets being 3-3 three to three means that if GG wants to make plays, they have to be in unsafe places, and the initiation potential when you combine Leona with Jarvan is extremely high. If TSM can find a way to get their minions to turrets, which is rather difficult against Lux, Lulu, and AP Trindamir, they'll be able to do something. Really good pickup on the Philo Stone coming in for Bloodwater here. He's actually only three, 200 gold behind a 0, 1, and 6 X special. So a great pickup, realizing that lane was going to be a bit behind. He's only 0, 2, and 1, and he's still keeping himself in this one. But they aren't on their way to the Aegis yet, and that could be very big for Team Solo Mid when it gets completed. If they can get to the Aegis first, that will be monstrous, especially considering, especially if they get to a Runic Bulwark. Uh, seriously, because Runic Bulwark gives the Magic Resist Ore to Whoa. minions in w as well. A lot of people don't realize Dread. the Aegis yeah. and Bulwark give the Ore to minions. It would make their sieging and pushing easier because the magic damage wouldn't take out, I don't think, the entire wave at that point. Right. We look around at some of the other builds. Zion Spartan's kind of fallen off here. He's had that Nashers for quite some time, and really he's only upgraded to the boots. And there was a pot in that that tome spot last time, so he's really just kind of inching his, his build together here. And speaking of builds, Kayak did this last game too. He doesn't build boots on Misfortune. He builds a Zephyr instead. So that's why he has the Stinger. He's going for a Zephyr in that build. He's not going to be building the boots. That's something we have not seen from many people. No. Wow. How can you feel safe with that? And they don't even have a Sona for well, movement speed boost. Yeah, you get your, your strut. Yeah. But you hit, you're done. 
and the Zephyr does give the move speed. He right. just wants to survive long enough to make it to that point. And he did it in their last game, and he's going for it again. Risk, reward. He's got a bit of fear here. Risk and reward. Boom, going out. They put the speed down right away, which may have been a mistake, but they're there with the burst damage right off the bat. They take him out. A bit of gold coming in there. Just kind of randomly waiting in brushes and being like, yeah, I don't think they saw us coming here. They had the pink ward and the tri brush, so since GSM didn't have ward and the tri brush, almost no one wards the brush by the double golems. They safely camped in that spot and predicted Kax would be split pushing, so that was a really good play by GGU. So we said that Team Solar Myth is going to do things that control the game, but with the pressure GGU is putting on here, they haven't been able to really break out of their own jungle. No, because the, la the lanes are staying pushed. Don't match me in Bloodwater because of some just random brush camping kept Chaos back. <laughs> Zion Spartan yeah. is going in Ooh. for Dyrus. Yeah, he is going to go hard. Doesn't throw it on the ulti just yet. Still holding it off to just the last point. There's the ulti. Gets the kill. Now oh. He doesn't have the ulti. He stayed he alive. Does. That whole, he does. Wait, yes. All right, I'm confused. He didn't use it. He, he thought he could get away without using his ultimate. But the last tick of Ignite finished him off. And he was just like, oops. Because that would have been a huge <laughs> pressure advantage for them after that one and oh, now man. TSM might take a dragon because they're so much stronger 2v4 if Zion Spartan was alive this could be a GGU dragon completely different it would be Jat they're gonna go ahead and grab this guy up at least he has his ultimate for the next fight but he did use the ghost and ignite on that one so his split push not gonna be as effective and they may just try to take him down right away mash me get the wards in they're a little late there on the bottom side Still, the Oracle's now not doing as much as I thought it would for Team Solo mid. They're kind of doing a great job at holding Odd One to just clearing his own jungle. Yeah, they really wanted to make that Oracle's make plays for them, but just because of the lane presence by GGU, that wasn't necessarily the case. And with Zion Spartan having 40% CDR on Trindamir, burning that ultimate wouldn't have been an issue, right? It's a 60 second cooldown with his 40% CDR, so he's going to want to make that play better in, in the future as he goes for that Lich Bane. Not one of the first games, but one of the very few games we see that nobody's really going full tanky. The junglers are kind of taking a tanky role, and then your tops are building more for damage and really team utility. Dyrus wants to be able to threaten Zion Spartan at least a little bit. Yeah. So because of the heal sustain that Trinomir is going to be able to do, Dyrus needs to make sure to get a build that can burst him like in a f in one cycle. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a little surprised, even just because it doesn't fit Dyrus's build, but if he were to get a Morellonomicon, either him or Reginald at some point, just to reduce the healing when he does go all in on Zion Spartan, if that right. can maybe be his next item, it's probably what he needs if he wants even a chance of dealing with him 1v1. We got a good push for Mash Me up top. He's got quite the minion wave to go at. So you see Zion Spartan trying to get himself through the jungle, actually in quite a risky spot. Wards in the jungle are going to alert them that he is there. He knows they have wards, so he, you see how cautious he's playing now that he was seen just mill milling about the jungle. Everybody's clearing out these waves, chat. It's all about that mistake. Everybody is just waiting mm -hmm. for it. This reminds me a little bit of GGU's victory over Vulcan, their only victory this season mm -hmm. when they had that crazy poke comp. Not because of the compositions, but literally, I think this was a gold total in that game at some point. Vulcan had about a 4,000 gold lead. GGU was down three to four turrets, and they just sat in here for a while. They got into a split push rhythm where they could keep the farm equal for a really long time. Vulcan got antsy, and Vulcan initiated, and then ended up losing the game. So GGU is trying to force TSM into a similar moment of antsiness, and they're hoping TSM gets forced into a mistake. Well, they've done a great job at keeping all the lanes past the river. I think this is the first time Chaos is actually going to be able to help push this top lane in the other direction as Zion Spartan just stays in that bottom lane. Very interesting that they're not choosing to push the top lane with Baron being up, but they again keep Dyrus out. And effectively, I think a Dyrus ultimate in this fight is going to be a lot bigger than a Zion Spartan. So this is. is really a huge play for them. A Dyrus ultimate is much better than a Zion Spartan in the lane, but what, what GG wants to be able mm -hmm. to do is get Dyrus to use a teamfight ultimate and that gets Zion Spartan a turret. I think that's the whole play. And finally, TSM's had enough of it. They're controlling around Baron, and they want to try to make a play here because they know they're stronger 4v4. The pings are there. If he, Dyrus can get vision of Zion backing in that bottom lane, they know he's going to start heading towards the top, so Dyrus may do so himself. Try to scrap shield his way up there. The wards are being all placed down. Odd one still sporting that Oracles. They know that Lulu is close, which means the rest of the team is close. So it looks like to be the dance, Jap. Baron Boogie. Snake Shuffle. Snake so Shuffle. Much, 
So much will go on here, but there's a oh, Reginald oh, ultimate oh, out of the wow. blue. That was a very nice ulti. Doing a bit of damage, but where's the initiation off of this one? He flashes the final spark damage. They're kind of walking out of a lot of abilities here. The reinitiation somewhat misses as well, but a huge on it here by Odwin and Dyrus. Both ultimates just overlapping. It looks like they're going to start cleaning up this fight. Bloodwater does make it out with a sliver. It's the Harpoons on and intend, dude. They try to go on to Don't Mash Me as well. The flashes are coming out. One last shot from Chaos picks up. Nintendo X and they look to back out losing nobody and Zion Spartan bailed out of that fight as soon as he popped his ultimate If he would have stuck around he might have been able to come and get some cleanup on X special or chaos But the threat is gone. He essentially went bottom lane to heal Maybe he can make it back up to stop this Baron because he really has to otherwise TSM will get complete control of this game TSM is super low. Mashmi has the burst damage to get through some of these health bars if they can get there in enough time They're not really crushing this Baron just yet the health is low. Zion Spartan is going to go in. Can he get enough oh, damage no. out here? They're going to make him focus him, but they all walked away from the Baron, so he took the damage as well. He didn't have his ult that time either. And if GG wanted to harass that Baron, they needed to communicate better and go in together because Don't Mash Me and Bloodwater were kind of there. It's just Zion Spartan went early. Don't Mash Me and Bloodwater weren't able to arrive at the same time. And people on TSM were low enough that if they spent the time to focus Zion, Mash me and Bloodwater could have gotten in a few good shots, but miscommunication, poor execution by GDU, crisp execution by TSM. They took that out. They had the communication at Baron. They got the smite down. Now they got a big lead. Six and a half thousand gold for Team Solo mid right now. 11 to six in the kills. And the turrets are still stale at three aside. We'll have to see what these guys do as we reach 26 minutes into the game here. It looks like TSM has found a good amount of ground with that last push. GGU was definitely climbing their way back into this one. We had quite an even game right up until that. It's all going to really be dictated by this next fight. That Baron is out, so it could be the TSM to just do it under the turret. And I like how Chaox has a bunch of swords that face in the same direction. I think it's a synergistic build for him. I, I do like the Zephyr build to point it out <laughs> once again, but the synergy of the pointing to the right is is good. This is absolutely amazing. Yeah. He is sporting five right pointing swords. He needs to get a vamp set. He needs to get an Abra's blade. There you go. Yeah. Six right pointing swords. Yeah. Silly giant spell. Look at how much right pointing damage they're doing to Dragon. They take it down. 27 minutes on that one, so we'll see him coming up at 33 minutes. We'll see if they even want it at that point. It's going to be all about the Baron once again as we get to that 33 minute mark. That's a push they have going now with that gold they have to know they're somewhat in the lead so it just takes one good engagement and tsm is not afraid to do that good engagement this is the kind of the moment they've been waiting for they do have the baron buff they know the that zion spartan is not with the team and they're much stronger than the other four for good game university but they've still sent dyrus to split push so they are playing this one safe and then chaos goes back to farming well so they're just content keeping this one slow hmm. just gonna leave them push the lane they have two wards going up so they still have the vision Back to super cautious play. 45,000 gold to 37,000 as we just talked about that deficit. The best way to, for them to come back here is global pressure, but they cannot get off their side of the jungle. TSM's now flipped it back onto GGU. They're starting to get wards past the river and into GGU's jungle. And you can see how much more, you know, not cautious they're playing. Couldn't find the word. Aggressive? Thank you. Reckless? Reckless. Reckless. Reckles. He doesn't play that. Everybody wants him to. 28 minutes, Jat. A slow one for GGU here. Where would it be a comeback for them? The comeback comes from TSM letting their Baron buff go out and Zion Spartan either killing Dyrus or getting some pressure on the other lanes with now his death cap being completed on Trindamir. But that's really tall task because TSM initiates very well and this is their window they have five people with Baron they're willing to tank up this turret without minions because they're so strong right now crush that one down we can see Mashmi's missiles just coming off from the side really not they doing keep going. anything he can command shockwave he doesn't even get a chance to breathe in the fight it's going to be a forced back for Vi Zion Spartan here unless they're just going to go all out base for base but I don't think he's going to have much of a chance. Zion Spartan actually does stay. They lose the inhibitor turret here. They're going to try to get just the gold out of this for the next fight. They know it's not going to be game, so they're getting what they can. 
TSM might try to end the game here. They're still pushing oh, up, and they wow. know Zion's not there. So it's 3v5 with Baron. They're going so strong. Takes eight seconds to back, 20 seconds on the clock for Mashmi. The first turret goes down in a second. The second turret goes down in a few more seconds. There's the ultimate from Dyrus stopping anybody who's trying to reinitiate in off the fountain. They're hitting down the Nexus. Team Solo Mid likes to take out GGU here in this matchup. 29 minutes and 30 seconds, and they just snapped their fingers and went for it because that's what you do against a split push composition like that, you go you go hard and fast, and they did exactly that. They got their one kill. Red, after Reginald solo don't mash me, they just pushed it through for the end. That is a really hard way to lose for GGU, but a great way to win for TSM.